I'm Elise Joan, and welcome to Livestrong.com's Plank Challenge for a Seriously Stronger Core. The goal is planking twice a day, every day, for the next four weeks. If you're just starting out, you'll hold your plank for 30 seconds, working your way up to a full minute by the end of the week. Now, there are lots of benefits to improving our core strength. Yes, you'll look amazing, but you'll also improve your posture, your digestion, your breathing, and you'll reduce your risk of lower back pain. Now, our core is our center, so it's imperative that we start there in building an overall healthier body. I'm gonna show you seven variations to do this week. Each is designed to strengthen your abs, your obliques, your hips, and your important lower back. Let's get started with the most basic and well-supported version of plank to send us off on our journey. So, we're gonna take a wider base in our stance. We're gonna bring the hands slightly wider than the shoulders by a couple inches. Then, level one, I want you to know right from the get-go, you can take any of these plank variations on the knees. This gives you a little bit more support for that low back. If you're feeling strong, we're gonna go ahead and take the feet wide, about a foot wider than each hip. Engage the core and come to our first pose, which is a wide-legged star-shaped plank. Abs are drawn in, shoulder tops are out of the ears. And here's where we establish some basic rules for all of our planks. We always want to lengthen through the low back as we draw the navel in and up to the core. You always wanna keep the shoulder tops out of the ears, and you always wanna keep a softness in the elbows. Now, we're already wrapping up, five seconds to go. Take one more inhale, and knees down. Believe it or not, that was the 30 second mark. Try this again later today. Let's move on to our second variation where we're gonna add some dynamic movement to that same base. Level one, you can always take these on the knees. Level two, let's take that wide stance again. And the reason this is more accessible is that we have a wider base, a little more support for our core. Now, here is how we add the movement. We're gonna float one leg, bring the knee to the nose, round the back, get a middle and upper back stretch. Back to plank. Two more on that side. Bring the knee in. Back to plank. Last one here. And then let's wrap it up on side two. Abs are in. Round the back so you can actually stretch that space between the shoulder blades, which is a nice stretch for those muscles called the rhomboids. Last one here. Go ahead and bring the knee in. Step it back to that wide-legged plank. Take one more breath. And then come down to the knees and sit back. So at this point, you wanna go ahead and roll out the wrists. If planking is new to you, you might start to feel some sensation there. Perfectly normal, just like anything, it takes practice. Let's move on to our third variation, which will be another isometric hold, means stillness. Let's get started. We're now on to our classic straight arm, straight leg plank. You'll feel a little more core connection here because you have the palms planted directly under the shoulders and the feet hip width apart only. So the middle finger tends to point straight ahead, a little bit of softness in the elbows, shoulder tops away from the ears, and here's the main work, the core. I want you to draw those abs in and up, which physiologically will also lengthen the low back. Now you press back into the heels, fire up the core, reach forward through the crown of the head, and take a few breaths here. Now for some of us who like to move, these static positions are even more challenging. Give me one last exhale, knees down, and that's your 30 second plank pose, basic classic plank. I know you can do that two times and really get into that core. Let's put that version into movement for our fourth variation. So we're gonna come here to plank pose. Same alignment goes and we're gonna go ahead and take some work for the obliques, internal and external. Let's float the right leg, take it across the body, and bring it back to plank. Two more, exhale as you bring it across, fire up the abs, and bring it back. One more on this side, and then same deal, we're gonna wrap it up on side two. Bring the left knee across the body, and press it back. Two more, exhale, so be sure you don't stop breathing, right? The breath, nice and long and deep, it actually helps alleviate stress, which you might be feeling from the challenge of plank by deepening our breath. Let's take one more breath here. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Knees down and set it back. Okay, from here again, roll out the wrists, take a breath. So, for our fifth plank variation, 
We're gonna go ahead and up the ante a little bit. Good news, your wrists get a break. Better news, a little more core and latissimus dorsi strength in a forearm plank. Same rules of alignment go. We're gonna come forward, only this time, instead of planting the palms, we're gonna bring the elbows down under the shoulders, fire up the core, and press it back. Now engage the belly, shoulder tops away from the ears, and find that nice deep breath. 30 seconds in forearm plank is already pretty advanced. So just deepen the breath, and I want you to connect to your metaphorical center as well, right? What are your core values? What are your core intentions? These are ways that we can accentuate our mind and our spirit into our physical work. So a couple more breaths here. When it gets challenging, we get a little more connected to our center. Knees down and ah, bring it back. All right, so I have plank variation number six. Same idea, we're gonna take that framework of forearm plank and put it into motion with some hamstring stretching bicycles. Let's check it out. Elbows down, make sure the shoulders are above the elbows. Press it back to your forearm plank. Now you wanna keep the abs in. And the most important point I'm gonna say here is that you wanna keep those hips at shoulder height. So soften the right knee, press the left heel back. Use the abs and switch. So it's like we're getting a little bicycling work and the leg that's stretching back straight, you're getting a great stretch for the calves and the hamstrings. And of course, with each breath I take, I'm feeling that power in my core. Try not to dump it all into the shoulders and the arms. We want these planks to really target our center. Give it one more moment here as you engage the belly. Last exhale. Knees down and press it back. Whew. I'm definitely feeling the core and the shoulder strength. It's actually full body work, all of these planks. Are you ready for variation number seven? It's gonna be the most challenging one so far. You've built up to it. If you wanna stay a little bit longer than 30 seconds, please do. We're gonna kill it in 30 seconds here. Let's go ahead and come forward. Next time, same forearm plank, abs draw in. Now the challenge here is to add a twist internal and external obliques and our transverse core. So you keep your rib cage steady, roll to the outer edge of the right foot, inner edge of the left foot, and just drop the right hip as you pull the chest forward and through toward the thumbs. Now if you can smile here, you're really killing it at life today. Try one more breath on this side. Come through center, if you need a rest, you drop to your knees and take the other side. So just a couple of breaths here to even it out, abs in, Chest moves forward, use the core, come back to center, knees down, and sit back. So if you stayed with me the whole time for that last one, you even made it a little longer than 30 seconds. Great work. These poses are not easy, and we're gonna kick it up a notch starting next week. I'll see you back on the mat then. Thanks so much for joining us on this journey to a tighter, more toned core. Click the link to access our calendar and stay on track. Don't forget to hashtag LiveStrongPlankChallenge to share your results, and I'll see you next time.